thank you all for joining us this evening. And I'm um, looking forward to hearing where we're going with this tonight. So, and looking forward to Jim joining us at some point. Uh, Mr. Doolin, the floor is yours. Uh, good evening, Mr. Vice Chairman. Uh, thank you. The first thing I'd like to do this evening is talk a little bit about uh, the after action report that the administrators and I put together based off of the latest incident we had uh, with the city about no electricity. We all learn something. You can't uh, you can't educate students in the dark. First and foremost, though, my hats off to Casey and Bo, Eric and Trevor, and Mrs. Hunt because Doc Lynch was out of the area, Drew was out of the area, and they jumped in and took charge and they made things happen. So we learned that. Uh, you cannot prepare a hot lunch for students without electricity. As you know, that was the Domino's Pizza Day for the high school, so they didn't get they didn't get Domino's Pizza that day. And as always, you know, students are our, our number one priority. We learned that our administrative team and staff are able to react to the administrator, students, staff faced with an unexpected power outage, and provide a safe environment for our students. We also learned that I can better communicate with uh, the mayor, uh, Imano Imano, although we did have calls going back and forth from the event on with, uh, with uh, uh, different, different ent entities at my level to the city, talking to Mike Campbell, talking to different entities, Trevor, our custodian's brother, uh, that's, that's Mike, right? That's his brother. So he called his brother and said, Mike Campbell, what's going on? Um, as soon as I, I as soon as electric went out, and you'll, you remember your uh, your Friday updates, I gave you what I exactly what I did for the for the audience. I I, I waited a few minutes. I thought it was just a, just a blurb, you know. I ended up going to the high school because Drew called me and said, "Hey, we can't teach in the dark." I said, "All right, I'm headed to the high school." All phones were out. All computers were out. All things ran by electric were out. So I go to the high school and I was met by Bo and Casey. I got Eric by me and I got Trevor by me and we immediately started planning. We immediately decided I, I have to send a message out to all the high school students. Uh, unbeknownst to me that my phone switched to Wi-Fi at the high school and well, if their electric's down, Mr. Mr. Hennessy, what happens to the Wi-Fi? It's down. It's down as well. So knowing that, I called Jenny down here, sits back there, a, a, a IC update person, and she got on her phone. It came off of Wi-Fi and went ahead and sent the sent the message out to uh, to to the high school students. Once we, I, I had Eric call May. He was talking to May all left and right, figuring out buses. Once we got the message out that school was going to be done at noon, buses will be there. Go home, come pick them up. We rolled with that. I went to the middle school. She kept them outside. Then brought them in to get them lunch. Took them back outside. Brought them in to clean their get whatever they needed for the end of the day. And we got them on the buses and, gone, and went home. But prior to getting them on the buses, the electric came back on. All the time, I'm talking to Dave and I'm talking to Danielle on the phone about what's going on at their individual schools. Dave said, we're, we're not going to shut down because we can't send little kids home to dark houses by themselves. So Dave, Dave's got many windows, as we know, at, uh, at, at Park or Pioneer. And I think you, you, got, you got windows there. High school has no windows. And then it came back on, as I just said, when uh, we were at the middle school. So I don't think we could have done anything different with what we knew at the time we knew it. I immediately got on the horn and called, tried to call Jim, unavailable. Got on the horn right after that, tried to call John. Jonathan LaRue was in the hospital, unavailable. Last but not least, I called the treasurer, and I, was, I think I was talking so fast, she's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I said, well, I tried to call him, I tried to call him, and you're next, though. And then I shared, I shared the story with you. So, uh, secondly, or if I could, we, we, we found out that we need a bunch of new uh, emergency lights. 
Those emergency lights in the high school are probably as old as when the high school was built. We've got to do a better job of testing our lights. I've talked to my, talked to my maintenance folks. Every month, the, the fire extinguishers get checked. So we're going to roll that into checking the, the, the lights as well. As soon as we get new lights, um, and that's, that's on the horizon. Marsh is going to help us out with that because, they, as you know, in the wintertime, hours tend to go down for our lawns folks. So, <coughs> and her being a, a certified electrician, she's going to help us out with, uh, with our lights. So in closing, I believe that all Weezer, the board, us, businesses, the hospital, county offices, parents, everybody, uh, anyone that receives their power from the city of Weezer was affected by, by the outage. I'm sure you guys were. So we all learned that uh, not to panic, but just to look at the situation, make decisions, go with them, and the very next opportunity you have, and which we did, we had an after action report right here with all, all, all of my administrators and my maintenance supervisor. Show me to your questions. Um, the outage wasn't supposed to not come on until like 2.30 Great point. Right? They, were telling us, they were telling us between 2 and 4 hours. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So it was an understandable closure, I guess. Yes, ma'am. But not expected to come on. A question from uh, a mindset for our local <laughs> team who said that they've made a decision not to close down Pioneer. But I do know from conversations that we've had a, a, a litany of kids that were released from Pioneer School. Do we have a method for tracking who was released and, and, and if our systems or our computers were down, do we have a checkout system? I mean, like, what's what's the plan moving forward with our kids? Well, as you as you know, any student, any parent can check, check their student out any, any time of the day. Yep. We saw a lot of a lot of uh, parents checking their students out at park and Pioneer because you know how the rumor mill is. In fact, Dave, Dave had a conversation with a high school student about well, all, clo all schools are closing. Oh, no, they're not. And he tried, you know, he told him, all schools are closing. Dave said, no, they're not. So, yeah, the secretary said, yeah, Dave, Dave talked to all, all of the parents in, in, in the uh, uh, hallways when they were there to pick their students up. And then uh, the secretaries had a check checklist as they checked students out. Yes, sir. So we have a, we have a a list of students that's not electronic that allows like shows them the here's our parents for each particular student who's yes, allowed to check them out and we can go through it they all have yes sir, they all have backups if their secretaries all have backup people backups and we use and we use those backups to check our students out 100 percent secretaries there was a um they had class lists and then um if we checked out anybody to a sibling they had the parent on the phone um, receiving an okay to do that okay yep and then, um, how do we notify? Like, so since our systems were down and our phone systems were down, yeah, I think it was Hold on. Don't interrupt my question. Um, how? <laughs> distracted me. Sorry. Uh, um, how did we notify our teachers in those in the incidents that you know the power went out? What are we doing with our teachers from this moment forward? Like, are, were they aware of like what's next on the agenda? How do we how do we go forward from here? Yep. And if they weren't. Um, what are we doing future tests to prepare for another situation if that were to happen again? Mm -hmm. forbid it does, but just in case. Um, what I did is um, got a hold of Mr. Um, Doolin, basically told him, I said, we have windows. We're, we're fine. I said, we are fine. Um, and we were about, I don't know, half hour 40 minutes from lunch, checked with the cafeteria. They said, all of our food is hot. It's in the hot box. I know the power's off now, but that'll keep the food warm enough for our kids. Um, so what I did is I, um, I called Mr. Doolin. Um, I said, we're gonna have lunch, but we're gonna eat lunch outside between the second grade and third grade wing in the um, courtyard area there. I went around to every classroom and talked to the teachers individually. So I told them what was going on. I said, we're gonna just go um, with exactly what our schedule is. And um, we did that. We released uh, by grade level, just like we always do. We ate out there um, in the courtyard. And we had everything really was, was humming along pretty um, smoothly. I had to step out for a second and get water so I didn't start coughing. Um, 
But what, the only time we even started to experience a little bit of confusion was when the high school and the middle school released and Pioneer School and Park School stayed in because I think there was just an assumption out there that all of the schools closed. And um, when the parents were coming up, um, I told them, I said, we're staying in. I said, we're going to stay in, guys. We'll be here until uh, the regular time. We're going to run buses at the regular time. Actually had a handful of parents say, oh, your guys are going to stay open. I said, yes, we have windows. We can keep teaching. We can keep doing whatever we need to be doing. I had some, some parents say, oh, great. They turned around and walked away. They didn't check their kids out. Um, and then... Um, and then shortly after that, the power did come on. I think we ended up, um, we checked out over 100 students, um, but we stayed open all day and did that. So the way that we communicated that initially was I went around and talked to each teacher. Um, and then we had, um, when we were starting to get uh, parents wanting to check kids out, we just used our radios in the building. And we had, we had a couple of them shuttling back and forth. We had our pairs going to the third grade wing or the second grade wing and then grabbing those students and bringing them down. And um, Stacy did a nice job. She said, if you've already asked for your child to be checked out, you guys will stay on this side of the foyer. Everybody else get in the line on this side of the foyer. And then we just took them kind of one at a time. And uh, they went through their, their printed paper list to see what class the kids were in. And uh, we just hustled around and checked the kids out. And um, Colin, our, uh, Colin McComish, our school nurse, he was outside meeting parents as they came up to kind of explain to them what our expectation was. Okay, so original on the original shutdown of power after you guys decided you were staying in the house, you walked around specifically to all the teachers yeah. and said, well, this well, is so what we're doing. We're going to go with the regular lunch schedule. We're going to do what we need to do. We'll eat outside in between and uh, let the kids be out and do their thing. And then I said, we'll get them back in. And we're just going to keep going. How many radios do you guys have in mind? Um, I think we have th we have three. We have one that works part of the time, but we have three. That was part of our debrief that we want to get a handful more. And then um, actually was able to... Uh, we have, um, I've got six more radios. They don't, um, they're, they're just the ones that you can buy at like a sporting goods store. And um, we've got them all charged up. Um, so we could actually go to those radios if we needed to, um, to just have one in each hallway. Um, and again, we would have Paris staged in those hallways and then I could be on it, the secretary could be on it, and we can do that too. So, um, but we just use those three radios and I kind of, I, I came from the office back down and got some kids and I know Denise Lumberg was doing the same and uh, that's kind of how we communicated. and just went to the wings and grabbed kids and, and, and brought them down. Um, you said when you were doing the after hour briefing, you mentioned, um, or after incident, possibly purchasing more handles. Are we talking about enough for every teacher so every teacher has an idea of what's going on? Or? Um, I, I, don't, I don't think we needed one for every teacher. I think we would just want to definitely have one um, enough so that we could have one uh, in the hand of a paraprofessional or somebody that's a, available, not supervising kids directly, sure. to be in each hallway. And then um, we would definitely have a couple in the office. We could have had one more out front, you know, with Mr. Uh, McComish. So we talked about um, it would be nice to probably have maybe three more videos at um, Pioneer. Then I think we would be really good and it would be um, super seamless. Again, it worked well. <coughs> People just had to be patient. And, uh, but we were able to communicate. We knew where the kids were. We knew who we needed to grab. And uh, I mean, as, as um, quickly as it happened, I, I felt like it was really pretty controlled. <laughs> Yeah, we knew where kids were. We have two. We have two classrooms at Pioneer School that do not have windows, and the alert emergency lights did come on in those classes. They function just right, but they're really not designed um, to run a classroom. It's enough so that you can get out of the classroom safely. And uh, we took those kids, had a couple classrooms double up, so that we just had those kids in a room where there was um, windows. And um, it was it was really interesting when I. Um, when I was going around to tell teachers that um, we were going to go ahead and just kind of stick with the plan and stick with the schedule, um, when I went down the, the third grade wing, which it was another 25 minutes or 30 minutes for their um, their lunch recess and lunch, every single classroom they were just teaching. They were just the, at the board. They were teaching because we have they just opened their blinds and, and, and we were good to go. And that's you know again unique to Park and the Pioneer because um, we have so many. Yeah. <clears throat> Our radio that we do have, are they able to communicate from school to school? 
Um, they, they can on the repeater channel. We um, have run into a, um, a few issues with some of the newer radios, I think communicating with the older radios. And that was a big part of our um, of our debrief um, that we talked about. But we want to make sure that we can have that um, flexibility. We were in communication um, with cell phones, um, but uh, for some reason, and, and you know, um, one of the things we need to look at it we, we talked about is making sure that there's a battery backup on the repeater because if the power's down, of course, if you don't have battery backup on that repeater, your your radios aren't going to you're not going to be able to communicate with one another. We've got to find another supplier if you will for our, our our radios that that they use on a daily basis oh yeah that i use once a year or twice a year when i talk to them the parade things of that nature this could have been an event but freaks freaks drop all the time our radios are old so i need to look to find another provider if you will um, outside of the radio communication we said that when the power goes down the wi-fi goes down as well our, I take it our telecommunication system is on Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Is there any possibility of having a backup system to the Wi-Fi just in case the system goes down? <coughs> so, one so we things, have one of the things we we've been looking at is um, actually came about from a conversation with Casey Clark is to allow telephony to continue is a soft phone which is basically an IP app that goes on a cell phone. You can program it to desk phones. So if the desk phone rings, it rings on the cell phone. It works outside of our internal telephony system. So if the internal telephony system is affected, as long as we have cell towers up and running, we'd be able to act as if they were school telephones. Um, for example, if my desk phone rings right now, my cell phone if somebody dials my desk extension, my cell phone number, uh, I can go into that app and dial a telephone number and would broadcast through the Weezer School District telephony number. Um, so it also masks my cell number. Um, that would allow us to stay communicative with parents, for example, without having to expose staff's private cell phone numbers. Um, there is a UPS backup on the telephony system, on the telephony PBX. Currently, it only lasts about 80 odd minutes. Um, once that 80 minutes is up, it's completely shut down. So, you, you talked about the cell, cell, cell tower going down. Now, Marcy couldn't use her cell phone at all when the outage went out, so that was a that was an issue too. If well, with her phone and probably probably some others as well. I didn't I haven't heard of any, but that's that, that's all was there. Uh, I guess last follow-up question to that question is, it, is um, do we have a, another meeting scheduled for follow-up, like another follow-up, or do we even need another follow-up, or are we good to go on, if you guys figure all the bugs out, we're good to go on? Well, this only happens once every 16 years, so we'll be gone by the time it happens again, as I've been told. But, no, great question, Mr. LaRue. <laughs> Radios, better communication. Definitely our, our light, our, our, our emergency lights, working with Kevin to see if we can get that, what he just talked about, it's above my pay grade, but if we can get what he's talking about. But again, I go back to, we did the best we could with what we had, and I, and I, 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 I echo again about uh, the people that stepped up that weren't even in charge. We did an outstanding job. So we did the best we could with what we had. Hey, good morning, afternoon. Right. But I, I don't want to, if you've answered this question, just tell me we don't need to go into more details. Do we have analog phones in our schools? Not only anymore. Okay. Right? Because they're old. But it's possible. It, it, it is. So we, we can keep talking about that because we, yes. Anyway, I just see when, that. great question, but yeah. when you go to fully next, yep. The cloud, you know. Yeah, I'm. I'm good. That was okay. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. We finish with we finish with this topic. Good. Okay. So, as we continue to talk about uh, standards, essential, targeted, homeschool, private school, charter school, 
voucher system. We have decided that we've got to be, and I ask for your help too, because it's going to affect you if it affects us. I would ask for your help. We've got to be the biggest advocators for the Weezer School District of Public Education in our area. So what we've done, I put together six bullets based off their guidance of why would you want your kid or kids enrolled in the Weezer School District. Now you can you can you can pack these up. You can give me your own. You can circle what you like, don't like. But in about a week's time frame, I'm going to take these bullets. And if you have any feedback, I'm going to roll these bullets into a a business card for every one of my admin. Their name on the front with their their job title, and on the back will be these bullets. Because what we've got to do, we've got to establish a two to three minute, I call it elevator speech. If you're walking down the street and you find somebody, that, that, that their kid doesn't go to our school district, and you start up a conversation, and they ask you, Jeff Church, why would I send my daughter to your school district? Oh, well, hey, I'm Jeff Church, I'm a lead teacher. This is why. Or I'm, this is why. So you can, guys can look at that if you like, take it with you. But I'd, I'd like to revisit that. If you could, let me know in about a week. Because I'd like to get those... Uh, I'd like to get those uh, those business card ordered ordered for our for our administrators. Questions on this, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They did a great job, uh, as well as Kyla, Riley, Miss Barr, some input. Uh, food. Yeah, all, all, all the directors gave me some input. All right, as we continue to, I, we call it going back to the basics in reference to, again, targeted, essential targets, standards, and please, after the meeting, and I invite, I invite the audience too, look up at that board to my, to my right. That's last year's ISAT scores. So every Monday, every Tuesday, we have ad council, we discuss that board and we discuss a better way ahead and how we're going to get, going to get, get those numbers up. So what we did, I took nine questions or nine, nine statements. Now we, we looked at these. We looked at a clear and shared focus. We looked at high standards and expectations for all students. We looked at effective school leadership. We looked at high levels of collaboration and communication. And you guys can read number five. So I did it first with my administrators. On a scale of 1 to 10, they said that we have a decent, pretty good, clear, and shared focus. Because if I'm to ask any one of my administrators right now, what's our number one goal, Mr. Davies? To increase student achievement. To st increase student academic achievement. Or for me, I'm going to kind of slow upstairs to raise student test scores. So we all know that. So that's why that got an 8. Number two, high standard expertise for all students. We, we, we need some work here. When we, that's why all students is capitalized. We've got to think more and do a better job reaching all students in the Weezer School District. Effective school leadership, I would hope they'd give themselves a nine or a 10 because they're the administrators in the building. But a nine, we'll live with the nine, we'll live with the nine. But the director said it's an eight. So that's pretty, pretty, pretty good, one, one point a piece. Effective school leadership, an eight and a nine. High levels of collaboration and communication. This is exactly what I what I I, I thought it'd be a little lower. And I'll tell you why. It's not that our staff doesn't talk. It's not that our administrators don't talk to our staff. It's trying to find the time to make that happen. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bush, we talked about this a little bit. We have no time for PLCs, professional learning communities. We give what we get on those Fridays, and that's all we got. So. I'm putting together a plan, and I'll visit with you about that on how we can get some more time reserved for like-minded academics at all levels to talk together once a week, at least an hour. Because data says that if you spend an hour talking about PLCs and talking about data, there's a result right here. It should raise these scores right here. So, number five, curriculum instruction assessment aligned with standards. Again, not bad, but we need to do better. And it all starts out with PLCs. It all starts out with finding that dedicated time to a lot for 
staff to be able to talk about standards, to be able to talk about summative, formative, and things of that nature to get our, our test scores up and continue with our number one goal. So six, six through nine, frequent monitoring and learning uh, of learning and teaching, we do pretty good there. Admin says half, half. Uh, we could do a lot better, they say. Uh, again, it's the time, the time, they, they like to have more time. Focus professional development. The director say eight, admin say five. I would say this is probably an eight. I would push this up a little bit because of the focused PD we've done thus far. Last Friday, you saw my Friday update. All district went through seclusion and restraint training. You saw we kicked off the school year with uh, the guest speaker I brought in, followed by uh, RTI training mm -hmm. from Solutions Tree. So we are targeting where we want to go. And if you step back and look at the whole process, it's, it's supposed to and it's starting to, to work together like we want it to. Supporting learning environments. If we're not doing this, we probably should find a new job. That's why those are, that's why those are high. Now the bottom one, we all need to work on. We, we've got to do a better job than we have. And that's why Mrs. Halverson, I don't want to put her on the spot, but that's why Mrs. Halverson's late, because she just had our first of the year uh, a, a parent meeting with our special education parents, then a pioneer. So we are trying to increase family and community involvement. So, subject to your questions. Are these numbers like the average of what they all submitted, or did they all come together? And we all did it in here, and just it was just uh, it was by by uh, raise a hand and just. Okay. Yeah. Just to try to set a foundation to yeah. where to, to where we need to go from. Yes, ma'am. Great question. The administrator, anything to add on that? Okay. Time to make more time for. Well, like I said, I'll, I'll put together. I'm going to put together a team, and we're going to come see you. But it, 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 like like Data said, it's got to be an hour. It should, it should be an hour a week. So it, it, you've heard of a late start. You've heard of an early release. You've heard of something along those lines. That means the kids come to school later during the day or they get out earlier on the day. I'm not saying it's got to be like that, but we've got to do something. If we want to put our money where our mouth is, so to speak, and do what we know has been done and has been successful, and we're on our way. We're on our way. We've got to, we've got to, to take that next step. And th that's the next step. Okay. Uh, another good point, if I could. We are off and running. You see on my Friday updates. We're off and running on our, our book. Our book. Uh, energy bus. Up that word. The, the energy bus for my direct administrators and uh, out learning the wolves with my front office staff and my directors. What does it talk about? It talks about leadership. It talks about uh, fun suckers. It talks about <laughs> people that are doomed, doom, doom. I mean, it, it's a great. And if you've never been part of a book study before, it does more than just, you just read the book and talk about it. It really brings out people's uh, 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 talk, the, the, the way they talk, it brings out, you know, some, some feelings and stuff. So it's a great opportunity. We're, we're off and running on, on both of those books. I hate, I hate in and on this, but you guys also saw what I, saw what I sent you on the, on the Friday update about the track. Um, it, it's getting colder. They need 55 degrees or 50 degrees and higher to put the, 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 the stuff down. And here's what the contractor tells me. Uh, evacuation and grading took longer than anticipated. Additional excavation, excavation was required to repair soft spots. Excuse me. And, I, and he says he believes that there were two, two days of rain delay. And I, know, I know there was. So we just, like Mr. Clark said, we want to do it right. We'd all agree on that. So I think on Wednesday they're going to start laying down asphalt, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, but they still can't lay down the, as, as Mrs. Uh, Thatcher would say, the squishy stuff until it gets, it gets, it gets hot and warm. That's efficient. So, so, efficient way. so question follow up on that trash then. What, if we're not getting it until next April, which at that date would be halfway through the track season, uh, what is our plans for, number one, the track athletes, what are we going to do with them to begin the season? And um, number two, uh, the two or three track meets that we typically have at the high school? Yeah, that's a great question, Fleury. Um Once the asphalt gets down, they can practice on the track. And let's hope that Dr. Croft will be nice enough to let us use his, his track again. All right, 
So we'll, we'll be using the track to practice with our shoes, not our spikes on asphalt. And then, and then for the track meets, what are we planning on doing? What yeah, unfortunately, what? our plan is going to be to utilize uh, pay it hopefully um, again, um, and that might be some some times where we're going to have to travel to practice to get those kids some some practice on the on the surface. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not unexpected. I think when we all started that process and where we were at with the starting, we were like, the odds of getting it finished before the, the winter were. It was, a, it was a hopeful pipe dream. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we started it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have tonight. Is that your question? Thank you. Yes, sir. Any more questions? Any more? Yeah. We've been Any more. more questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on. Okay, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Bush, um, Mrs. Hunts, Mrs. Hunts here. I think you saw what she she provided you. Uh, unless you have any questions for her, she's not going to speak unless you wanted her to speak about what she gave you. You want more? Do you want less? You want something different? That's very limited right now because you only had one, if even one, testing testing cycle uh, for for the students. So, um, we're talking about the assessment completions, right? Yes, sir. What, the data, yes, yeah. yeah. sir. Um, can you just fill me in on what the difference is between the 2023-2024 ISAT? Like, why we aren't able to compare and contrast? What did they change? Um, so it's not the ISAT, it's okay. the IRI. Thank so it's you. just the K-3 okay. students that it affects. Um, the company that does the test, the ice station, changed the like scoring percentile ranks nationwide. Um, so, if you go back, and I have a whole presentation on it if you guys really want to see it, but um, if you go back historically, like our IRI scores, K3, were always in the 80 to 90 percent proficiency, and that was a totally different test. So about 2018, they completely changed the test, and then 22, they changed the scoring of that new test. So really, the last two years worth of data are all that we can compare if you're looking apples to apples. Well, we do have ice station for one more year. Uh, then they're going to go out. Well, they're, they're actually looking right now for a new platform. But ice station will be with us for, for this for this this year. accelerating it gives you some great equivalencies to look at because that's not a specific part of the report for ICIP or I station and same thing for our kids who struggle it gives us some great equivalencies to kind of look at so we can start figuring out as teachers in our in our classrooms where might I need to adjust my instruction to to mirror some of those great equivalencies for kids um, that was a piece of data we received when um, we did the star test um, and so that's kind of why that that norming was done. It's pretty typical for assessment platforms to change their norms about every five years, so it's about where we are. Does that account for this note on here about the eighth grade scores, or what, what is that one? No, do you want to ask? I can speak to that, sure. Okay. So part of um, our goal within our special education department is to ensure that our kids are making annual growth, and the one measure that we have to use right now is iStation, um, and so we have um, access 
with Pioneer Park in the middle school. So our high school students that were monitoring their progress are included in the middle school group. So Mrs. Hunt had to adjust that data. Um, I can now go do some adjustments in iStation, which I think will help pull those kiddos out of the eighth grade data, and so she won't have to make that adjustment moving forward. So we're gonna try some things, but that's really our progress monitoring tool for their progress towards their IEP goals and how they're doing with that. Mr. Dickerson, anything you want to add more than your written report? Oh, I, sure. Um, so just, I just wanted to add a highlight um, right now that uh, it's kind of a, a high point for us, I guess, but we have 391 students that have 98% attendance or better. Um, 141 of those students have perfect attendance, haven't missed a single class period. Um, that's pretty neat. And then um, we only have seven um, students, um, and these are not exact numbers, it's just a, a ballpark, but we have around seven students that have 70% attendance, and right now that's been five absences um, or more. So that's kind of a highlight for us is that we got a lot of kids coming to school on a daily basis. Um, pretty neat that 141 students have not missed a single period, right? So that's pretty neat. Um, now, in that 391, um, you do have students that have missed periods, but it hasn't added up to seven periods, which would be a considered or, uh, considered a day. So um, we have students that have missed those periods and they're managing our system, right, of how you get around our rule to not miss those days, which is kind of tricky, but um, we appreciate that. Um, and so with that, we have a lot of good things going on at the high school. I wanted to uh, bring some guests to help uh, share some, some good things that are happening. And so I actually invited our band uh, drum majors uh, to come and speak with you tonight, if that's okay. Hi, good evening, guys. Thanks for having us today. Thank you, Mr. Dickerson, and thank you guys all for giving us some time to speak about the good things that are going on with the Weezer High School Band. Um, I'm drum major, I'm the senior drum major here at Valdivia. And I'm a uh, junior drum major, Grant Walker. So we're just going to talk about some of the really good things that are going on with the, the school, with the Weezer Band that's going on. So I'll just start off with a little like backstory of how I, how I started. So since the start of middle school, sixth grade, where every student starts, uh, you have the option to uh, choose band. And I, I decided to have taken that because my family, all well, my family, I have two older cousins, older brother and older cousin that all took the choice of doing band and so I decided to partake in that legacy because we all played sax once it was all a little fun thing to do. So we did a lot of that growing up and I decided to continue with it all the way to my senior year and it has been one of the best decisions I've made in a while, in, not a while but one of the best decisions I made, you know, growing up. It's helped me develop a lot of good things. So you go on through middle school learning the basics of the horn and before you know it, you're ripping cool stuff out of your horn. You know, it's really cool, the big change you see in a year to two years, to three years, four years, it goes on. And so, as soon as I got into high school, we learned the big thing, marching band. Playing on the move, kind of out of breath, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the marching band has been successful now, up to my, all the way up to my freshman years when our big success started, our dynasty essentially of success. We won our, my first year, freshman year, my sophomore year, and last year. So we've been successful all three years at the D3 competition at Boise State. And that, that freshman year was our first competition since the pandemic, because the year before had gotten canceled. My freshman year was the first year it was back, back on track, doing everything, doing everything right. And right now we're on track to win our fourth year in a row which means I haven't lost a D3. And I <laughs> so that's been fun. And not just the marching band is an elite part of the school. It is the jazz band. We always show these big schools like Timberline, Capital, what's up? Like Weezer can shred. We can, we're the, we're the big, we're the, little, we're the little cats that can, you know, we play, we play pretty dang good. Our concert band also shows some pretty, pretty cool stuff. We play a lot of, a lot of nice symphonies, I guess we could call it. Um, yeah, it's 
it's just really cool stuff that Urban has been up to. You know, we're always successful every year. And that is my part. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, so thank you, you here for sharing that. And um, so me personally, I've always loved band. And uh, I, I started in uh, fifth grade in Boise, but like, uh, yeah, I went through that. And uh, I moved to Weezer in eighth grade. And right when I got to the, the band program, it was just amazing. I, I really liked it here. And yeah, it's, uh, as soon as I got into high school, marching men, you know, it's uh, playing the move, stuff like that. Um, and then we ended up, uh, the first D3 competition my freshman year, we ended up uh, not just winning uh, our division D3, we won all the captions, like we swept everything. So it was like, this marching man is amazing, I, I love it here. And yeah, our band is amazing. And uh, I didn't start, uh, jazz band until my sophomore year, but right when I got in it, I also loved jazz band as well. We're such a good group. We always play so well at the, the festivals that we go to every year. And, uh, yeah. And uh, the fun part of jazz band, you also get to participate in pep band, go to the basketball games, play loud, have, have a lot of fun. So, uh, and yeah. Uh, another, another part of band we have is our percussion section as well, our percussion ensemble. And they always perform well with our concert band, and uh, we always uh, give the judges a, a nice uh, elite performance every time we go to festival every year. And uh, I really see our uh, band doing well in the next few years. I mean, like, we've won the last four D3s D3 since, like, it was freshman year. And yeah, we're, we're, doing, we're doing really good right now. And yeah, that's, that's about it. I have. That's about all I have right now. Any questions? Can you tell them when your next competitions are so they, they can come? Um, yeah, aren't aren't they coming up? This, don't yeah, you have we, quite we, a few on Saturdays? A we have a, we've got a competition every Saturday of this month, and the last Saturday of this month is going to be our final one. That's so the one, this is, this, yeah, this is the bit. Yeah, this is the one that matters a lot. We're on that blue turf, you know, hoping to dominate every time once again. Um, but our competition this week is going to be Saturday at... Valley, Valley View Valley at yeah. 11, I believe, is when we perform. Yeah, we perform at 2. 2. <laughs> I, I have no faith in that. But we perform yeah. at 2. Um, we hope to do pretty well, as per usual. We usually do pretty well. Congratulations on your success. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Did you say you play the saxophone? Yeah, all my, all my, all my family. Yeah, he does do. I play the saxophone. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Very superior to everything else. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> do, you have a, do you have a plan to continue that into college? Um, I have thought about it. I think I already, I'm debating with like U of I and BSU to go. BSU is definitely bigger with the music because they got that Blue Thunder marching band, which is cool. I'd have to audition for that. But I'm also thinking U of I because they have a pretty cool jazz program, and that's kind of what I'm more interested in. So I'll definitely figure that out. That's, yeah. For me, for me, yeah, I like I like concert band a lot, um, and uh, I my my main instrument is a clarinet. I do play tenor saxophone in the jazz band, pet band, stuff like that. But I was thinking I was probably definitely going to go into college for like clarinet or something like that. After after like after I graduate high school, I serve a mission for my church, and then yeah, I go to college and play clarinet and something like that. So you guys sound good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So yeah, just the the jazz band or the band program at the high school is, is one of the elite programs in the state. They are they are phenomenal. We're proud to have them at the high school. Um, they have a, a tremendous amount of student athletes. Uh, they get out there and are are participating um, in band and and doing great things. And they they go out and practice every Friday right every now. Friday, um, and for quite a while, yeah. I see them out there in the morning practicing. Um, it's it's a dedication that you know um, they put the effort in and get rewarded for it. So we appreciate them very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions uh, for me of the high school? Questions. Thanks. Thank you for bringing those uh, students in. We we love to hear from our students. Absolutely. We love to to be able to highlight them and. and Show them off to our community because yeah. kids are great, great kids. So I do have a question. So, 
Do we ever send all of the other athletes, because these guys play at every basketball game, every football game, do we ever send any of the other athletes to watch them in the competition? So we actually have, uh, well, it's kind of funny, they're, they're a lot of the same kids. Right. So, um, but we, we do, we don't send buses usually to go watch them, but we have a large following that oh. go and support them, um, that go on their own individually. But yeah, if somebody wanted to get a, a bus together and go support them, I think that'd be we've awesome. seen that happen in other them. schools, that's kind of cool. Yeah. The worst part about it is, is that it, there's, it's all packed into the same days all week long. And so it makes it, it makes it tough. It, it makes it tough when we send um, pep buses to other events because most of our kids are competing somewhere. So. Right. Yeah. I just wondered if some schools do that. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Clark, anything additional from your written report? Um, well, one thing I will add is that um, the band concert is at 7 p.m. on um, October 29th. So that includes the middle school and the high school, and that is at the high school. Um, the choir concert did a great job if you were there. Um, it, it was a Halloween theme, and they did an amazing job, and so I'm looking forward to seeing the band. Um, we, we did a lockdown drill today and, um, and included an evacuation piece to that, and then they, the buses came and loaded and, and did their regular evacuating from the bus as part of it. So the lockdown um, students just and teachers take it seriously. It was, um, it was, they were out of sight, lights were out and they were out of sight and they took it very seriously. And then we, um, we, we sounded the alarm in the passing period, at the end of the passing period so that students get in, in the practice of going to the nearest classroom. It's near the end of the classroom, so most of them were in their classrooms. Um, that way we can kind of work, work out any, any details that weren't there. Um, and then the message to them after the drill was that they went to their class if they weren't already in there, and that in an, in a, in an, in an real emergency, they would have to be evacuated and, and, and released, and so that we were going to just practice that. So it wouldn't be mass, okay, you can leave now. We would, and so we did the sixth, sixth grade, we did the seventh grade, and then we did the eighth grade. But, um, no real issues and little minor things, and they were taken care of, so the system was good. And then perfect attendance, we recognized our perfect attendance today. We gave them, we did a drawing. We had 75 students with perfect attendance, and um, we did a drawing, and each homeroom had one student that was drawn out of their homeroom to receive a personal pan pizza from Idaho Pizza. Mr. Bush, if I could. Please. Thank you. Uh, I was there. Cody was there. And if I was an active shooter in the sixth grade wing, I would have left the sixth grade wing because I didn't hear nothing. I tried to hit, I tried to break some doors down. Nobody came to the door. So I would have walked, I would have left sixth grade wing if I'd ever, if I was able to get in the school. Number two, it's a great, it's a great opportunity Whenever we can do inter interactivity training. Now, this is the first time I've ever seen this before, uh, where, where a lockdown turns into an evacuation drill that, uh, that, that meets May's annual requirement. But what it does, it lays the foundation for our drill coming up in the spring. Remember last year, we talked about it going through the full, the full kit caboodle, uh, where parents can pick their kids up somewhere, some location. To, to, to emulate a real lockdown thing. So this is the first step in trying to see how that might play out. So they did a great job. The bus folks did a great job too. Mr. Church. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, just a brief uh, addition to uh, the, the board report for Indian Head. Um, we have a uh, planned trip that uh, we're, we're planning to go down to TVCC on November 6th to the uh, CTE Open House, the uh, Career Technical Ed program down there, and uh, hopefully show our students uh, what they have to offer in terms of GoTech programs. 
So that was in addition to our outstanding. Any any other questions for me? Slightly disappointed that your graduate didn't want to have a graduation. Yeah, we were too. We were kind of looking forward to cake, and he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't into it. So. Hopefully, we'll have one more at the end of this session. We we got one that's really close. So outstanding. Michael Lynch. I'm happy to answer any questions based upon the report that you have in front of you. Uh, I think that your idea that you posted in there is a good idea. Even if others think it's cheesy, I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and I know Jim is just jealous right now because that was not just a response. So. Uh, That's up. All cutting aside, how did you come up with that idea? Um, it's just, uh, I'm a huge foodie, um, yeah. and I just uh, wanted to do something a little outside of the box or something uh, engaging. So it could be a complete dud. Uh, just ask me this in, uh, in May, and we'll see what that looks like. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> I, I like it. I, I do. Teach everyone how to cut the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I teach everyone how to cut Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> just a couple of quick comments, guys. Um, uh, of course, you guys know parent-teacher conferences this week. Um, that is a huge thing at Pioneer School. Um, we'll, we'll see 95 to 100 percent of our parents right in there. So um, this, is, this, is a, this is a huge, again, community event for our, to get our parents into the school and have an opportunity to visit with the teachers. And uh, I know it's, um, it's a lot of work for our teachers, but they do a great job and uh, schedule those conferences. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, wanted to point out on my uh, newsletter, there was a new little section at the bottom. It's called Did You Know? I think it's Did You Know or something like that is what I call it. But great idea from our t uh, from the staff. We were visiting at one of our um, meetings, um, at our, one of our leadership meetings, and just little snippets of stuff that happens at Pioneer School all the time that so many people don't know about. And I've um, what I've done is I've asked them to send me those little snippets so I can include them in my parent newsletters, but then I can also include them in the board reports. And uh, just so you guys know, um, one of them was uh, one of the second grade classrooms, um, or actually, excuse me, the second grade classes got together and for Grandparents Day put together a bunch of neat cards and got some little boxes of candy from uh, Patrick down at Weezer Class Candy and went around to the um, to the care centers in town and, and distributed a bunch of stuff just to say thank you to uh, to some of our senior citizens in Weezer, which is a great effort. And uh, we got some good feedback. Had one gentleman that made a point to drive to Pioneer and just said that was just, it just made my day. What a neat thing. Um, and then the, the other one that I put in this month is, uh, some. if you guys haven't been in Pioneer, some of you have, uh, in the, the little kind of breezeway between the second and third grade wing, there's a bunch of big windows there, and the second grade teachers have putting, been putting together a giant American flag where kids all build little pieces of the flag, and it's part of our um, Constitution Day celebration, and it's really, really neat. So um, those are just a couple this year, or excuse me, this month to get us started up, but uh, hopefully there'll be a lot of fun little information that comes your way. Just talk about all the great things outside of all of the academic stuff um, that we're doing on a daily basis at Pioneer. Um, would like you guys just to maybe put on your calendar that on um, Tuesday, November 12th, is our Thanksgiving lunch. Um, last year, Rachel, what did we feed? About 900? Yep. Something like that. Honestly, fed about 900 people that day. Um, so we might as well have five more. Okay? Uh, so um, if you guys want to come down and join us, that is a, that's another great community event. Um, we have some guests servers come in and help us out in the cafeteria um, but that's a big day for us we will also re um, invite all of our retired teachers to that lunch on that day so it's a big event a lot of fun so if you guys can make it left happy there um, uh, mrs clark brought up uh, the bus evacuation may and i um worked on this it's been probably a few weeks ago now three weeks something yeah, like that the 17th of September. so uh, early in september almost a month now um, but uh, we did a bus evacuation drill and we had all of our students at pioneer school kindergarten through third come out visit with the bus drivers get on the <coughs> buses and talk about how to safely get off the bus in an emergency and um, even though a lot of our kids don't ride the bus there's a great probability they might get on a bus for a field trip or for something like that. So um, appreciated that working with May and um, got that taken care of. So uh, definitely was an, uh, an important one for us. And then my last thing is um, uh, when working with my staff last, uh, last spring, we wanted to talk about bringing back a little bit of homework, bringing back our nightly reading uh, for 20 minutes, uh, 10 to 15 minutes of math homework. 
And uh, what we want to do is we want to recognize our kids and our families for working so hard to get that done. And the teachers have been keeping track. I don't have the numbers because I was just starting to collect the data today, but we're going to recognize our kids each quarter. Uh, this quarter, students who turn in 80% of their uh, math and reading homework, then we're going to ratchet it up to 85% for the second quarter, 90% for the third quarter, and 95% for the fourth quarter. And um, But we're going to do something for those kids and just say, hey, you know, great job. You're investing in your um, own education. Uh, we know you're getting support from home, and uh, we want to recognize those kids for their positive efforts. So I'll keep you guys posted on that each quarter. Awesome. Thanks. What time is that Thanksgiving lunch? It will start about 11 and go to about 3. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a huge chunk of our day, but I believe the first meal will be served and it'll be kindergarten and it'll start at 10.50. Okay? So. As a, uh, as a big PBS nerd, I love the Did You Know series. That you okay. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I had a chance to catch some of your third graders walking around. Town last Wasn't that week neat? With the, uh, yeah. The history of the town. Mm -hmm. I love that the middle, uh, the the elementary school does that. And, yeah. they and, that, that and that's a very traditional field trip. It's been happening for a long, long time. And uh, they tweaked it this year and actually had some guest speakers along the way mm -hmm. that actually were able to give more history of Weezer. It was um, that's a huge effort. And again, a lot of parents joined uh, the classes and walked around. So really, really neat uh, field trip for those kids. By the time I got done with that day, my hand was red from all the high fives of the kids. They're third graders. They know how to give high fives. Yes, they do. So, it was Thank good you. to see them. Yeah, that was fun. Good field trips, it looks like. But they... Yeah, yeah, a lot of great field trips. You guys saw that in the report. So, yeah. a lot of fun. Thank you. Uh -huh. Is there anything additional other than your report? Yeah, the only thing that um, I would add to was just coming from the uh, first official SPED PAC meeting, uh, PAC being Parent Advisory Council. I stole that from our migrant federal programs because um, that's what good educators do. We steal from other people. <laughs> um, but, you know, I was really uh, excited. We ended up having 11 parents show up this evening. And given the time being kind of a 4.45 start for our, our first meeting, it's it's not maybe the most parent-friendly time because it didn't necessarily allow everybody to get off work. Um, but parents just kept coming in. So we had 11 total. Great conversation about um, what can we talk about at parent-teacher conferences. It doesn't have to just be about a report card, but we can talk about um, with our students with disabilities. You know, how are they socializing with their peers? Are they interacting in cooperative learning opportunities? Opportunities. Um, because sometimes for some of our kids that's the primary focus of their time in the classroom um, and so I think parents just wanted to know it's okay that they can ask those questions and of course we have more to talk about but they uh, generated a list of topics that they are interested in learning more about and we decided that we would meet quarterly but our primary focus over the course of this year is going to be how do we help support our students in transitioning um, our special education students specifically, how do we help them transition from building to building to building in our district so that it's not a reinventing the wheel when they go to a new school um, and also building uh, some familiar uh, familiarization for the parents of that new building. Uh, and then how do we grow from school year to school year even though they stay within a building um, because kids change a lot over the summer or they might change a lot from one annual IEP to the next. So. Um, I'm excited about the work that's in front of us, and I think it was a fantastic parent group, um, and very thankful for them showing up. So it's a good event. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I've asked uh, my directors to take two minutes and share something with you. Oh, in total? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> share something with you that's going, on, that's going on in their world. This is Mrs. Thatcher. I know you love to speak. So. Yes. You point out. <laughs> okay, so every Thursday we do dominoes and smoothies at either the high school or the middle school. Um, we have new <coughs> menu items, mostly, well, I'm, we've been doing it at all the buildings, but mostly at the high school and the middle school to try to increase participation. We did a ter teriyaki chicken and rice bowl, and Wendy and Elma are fantastic because they add a little extra, but they added some <laughs> veggies with it. And she said that she had done 90 servings and they ran out. I mean, and they always have more than one item, but the kids loved it. Um, let's see. 
we've tried a barbecue rib hoagie, some chicken tacos, a chicken fiesta bowls coming. And then we want to try a, like a baked potato and chili bar. Um, uh, we've been adding more scratch cooked meals to the menu. And then the Thanksgiving lunches are coming. November 12th is the Pioneer and the high school. And then middle school is the 13th, park school is the 14th. And then we wanted to see about maybe getting a barbecue grill for all the barbecues everybody wants to have. <laughs> and then um, the only thing that we noticed like with the power outage was if it's going to be extended, maybe see about getting a generator for the at least one of the freezers so that we could move product if we had to. So. Me? Well, these guys took care of her of mine, so <laughs> I still need to um, schedule with Park School and High School to get to get all the, the rest of the students um, to go through an emergency evacuation. Uh, the, we're still on the same schedule for the new buses coming in. Hopefully, the Cavity bus will be here in November. Uh, the second one will be March, April. And then we, the third one will be in November of 2025. Thank you. Eric? Um, the group of guys, and you know, it's all guys, that I have working for me, uh, one of the things that we started out the school year is I kind of challenged them to come up with better ideas of their daily routine, cleaning what would make it easier for them and they've came up with some stuff that we have shared with the other custodians and to make it easier guys are all team working together it's been great uh, trying to keep our buildings as clean as possible maintaining um, stuff we uh, run into we're trying to make it better and just keep it the same if it does have to be replaced um, other than that, it, uh, working with the admins has been great. Mr. Doolin's got them trained well. Uh, <laughs> no, it's been great working with these guys uh, each school. And uh, yeah. Is that a, a bottom up training or a top down training? Yeah, the one, it's a little bit of both. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Morrison? Um, so, a couple things. I. With the help of Kyla, we received a grant from Lore, uh, Lore Project or Lore Foundation to do a park school project to put a fence in the back for safety. It was installed last Friday. Cut out all the old go posts that have probably been there since your grandparents were children. Got a brand new set of 7x21, I believe, right? Yeah. yeah, which is legal size. Um, I did receive those. I'm not going to put them up till spring because winter's coming. And the baseball field has been dug out, but the sand will be here this next weekend to complete that project. Um, oh, and Fred will be painting basketball court keys and four squares in the spring as well. Um, the other project that my, me and my group have been doing is inside of my building over here, if you guys don't know, there's a 16 by 12 building that's been there for, May said, over 25 years full of drama club clothing. I do not have a heated building, and so I didn't have any warm place, any warm place to do work in the winter. So I asked last fall, actually it was a year ago, if I could clean that building out, do something with it, so I don't have to continue to take it home on my kitchen table, and I was granted that. Um, what they did was they purchased a 40-foot Connex box, which is down at the high school, and I just built a closet inside of there and put all the drama club clothing in there and then turn this into a heated workshop for me and my team, so. Awesome. That was probably quite a move. Yeah. Was like, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was about five trailer loads full of yeah, clothing. I've been in there. It, <laughs> I started it, I, I started building the closets on the uh, 27th of, Fe of September and it took me Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday to complete that because I had to dismantle it to build it down there. And so, yeah, with the help, with the help of my girls, which none of us are carpenters, uh, we've learned a lot. <laughs> but we did did finally 
it, and it's working out great. We've got a great little area in there now for us to work and warm up and take care of what needs taken care of. That's really good. That's good. How much was your how much was your uh, grant for? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. If I could, it's just just another example of our people thinking outside the box. They see they see something needs to be done. They look at the resources they have, and they get it done. And I, I invite you to go up and look at the Connex box and the racks that she built. And I, I tell you, the clothes look a lot better in the Connex box than they looked in that, that room, all crunched up together. And Mrs. Price, about 600 pieces, I think, give or take. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Last but not least, Mr. Hennessy. I'll, I'll try and keep it simple so I have four people, three people to sleep. But we've been uh, working on the internet infrastructure. Um, we've removed old hardware. Uh, we have fiber optics coming in, fiber optics going to all the buildings. Uh, there was a piece of old hardware that was basically throttling our internet connection. So there was high speed coming in, the old hardware was unable to handle it, so it was letting out slower speeds than coming in. We've removed that, improved internet speeds. Um, <clears throat> there's still some latency in the network. Uh, latency is basically the time it takes data to travel from one piece of equipment to another. Um, piece of equipment that are causing the issue are basically the switches. Uh, if you think of a switch like a, an airport terminal, everything gets funneled into the terminal and it gets sent off to different places. It's basically what the switch does, the internet comes in and then it sends it off to places where it needs to go. Um, some of the cabling in that is a little old school. Um, the cable isn't capable of carrying the speed and power that we need to move it through on about 90% of the way through changing out those cables. And on changing the other 10% tomorrow evening and then we should see another spike in internet speeds and stability. Um, another project that's complete is the placement of the cheaper APs, access points. Um, <coughs> they have what is referred to as AI. Um, it's not obviously true AI, otherwise we have a Terminate the situation. <laughs> it allows them all to talk to each other, um, so they talk and listen, so they basically manage the network themselves. So if you've got 200 students connected to an AP over here, and that AP is starting to struggle, it will talk to the nearest AP and pass off connections from that AP to another AP. Uh, it basically <coughs> allows for a smoother usage uh, of the internet. And then the other thing that we mentioned earlier was the soft phone app for cell phones in the event that we lose our voice over IP network. Obviously voice over IP needs two things, an internet connection and power. If we lose either of those, then we lose our entire telephony network internally, whereas that soft phone app can still allow us to contact, especially in crisis or an incident like a power outage, to contact parents and staff. I did not realize you were in an accent. I know. I don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're here today. You're here. <laughs> so you're, you'll remember last year all the talk about E rate, E rate, E rate. This is, the, this is what we received because of all that. So it's finally coming to fruition. All the hard work was done last year to prepare. For one Mr. Hensley putting in the place. So if you have any more questions for the directors, I'm going to send them. I I just want to say one thing to to all of the admin and directors. I I think there's a lot of times that our kids don't recognize what you do for them, and I I think it's awesome when we can recognize janitors and administrators and teachers and and directors and. The, and we, we actually did that at a volleyball game a couple weeks ago when we recognized Nacho that, that is there at every volleyball game. And the kids recognize him. And for those of you that weren't there but that, that you're in front of the kids, they recognize that. And I just want to thank you for, for all the hard work that gets done um, at, at every level. And, and the kids really do appreciate that. And I appreciate the fact that they recognize. They they went out and took a picture with Nacho, and 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 handed he gave him a copy of that picture so that he could have it with the volleyball team. And uh, it was just it was really cool. It, it's really fun to watch 
the kids recognize the hard work that goes into helping them progress in, in all that they do. So thank you for all that you do. And I'm just going to add, because it's, it's fun for Mr. Doolin, thank you for all you do, but especially all that you think you do. <laughs> That's pointing towards me. Right? <laughs> Appreciate it. You can listen to this. Thank you. It took me three months to figure the last part out, though. What am I supposed to say? <laughs> And I know it's coach led, but those girls totally participated in that and enjoyed it with them. So. All right. Moving on to, I, because I was so early in the meeting, um, did we receive any notices? I thought you, I thought someone put something up there, but I don't know if it's on the agenda, so I don't know. Nothing that I have. Did wasn't it your wife? Oh, she went off. Oh, she's not going to present. I, I thought, yeah. Okay. okay. Awesome. W.A., it's yes. your turn. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I've been back here popping up this morning. I'm like, Mr. Davies, three weeks gone. We got this. <laughs> so, last time I presented, I was like, in a, I had monsters with me, and it was a mess. But... <laughs> they were cute monsters. Oh, thank you. We'll hope this one's just as cute. Um, so I just wanted to tell you a little bit, I'll make it quick, about my why I chose to volunteer for this position. <laughs> um, so not only were our former presidents ready to move on, but I attended Delegates Assembly um, for the IEA last year, and I just really wanted to make, I just really wanted to get more involved in our local chapter. and. Really my goal as like co-president is to like work with admin and you guys the board to help increase communication and understanding between like our policies and why things are the way they are. Like I'm new in this, so you might have even already answered some of these questions for our other presidents, but um, I know there's a, quite a few new board members as well. So um, and honestly, even if there's no solution to a problem that I may present, it's still really nice to be heard and like that our problems are considered valid. Um, that might even be the solution is like, hey, hear me. Um, and so that's a little bit about my why. And on that note, um, so we had a training on Friday on how to handle um, students in crisis presented by Mrs. Halverson, which was a great refresher um, of some of our previous trainings we had last year. I think it was the healing children mm -hmm. who came last year, last year. Um, and that kind of <coughs> piggybacked off of what they had presented last year which was great um, now we're hoping that many of our teachers are really eager to move forward to have some like open and honest discussions about how to implement some of those strategies that we've been talking about for the last public sorry the last couple of years um, and how and with with the available resources that we have at each school because we see um, students behavior escalating and de-escalating and it's really important as a classroom teacher and as a school with our paras to know if this then this type of situations um, so we just really are looking forward to have more of those conversations um, <coughs> um, to come and I think that's really all I got. <laughs> um, we, as a third, as a pion at Pioneer School, we also, um, we're really sad that uh, Trevor is, we heard he's going to be going to a different school. But he's been great at Pioneer. <coughs> he's our janitor in the third and second grade week. And we love him. Like, I just, in passing, mentioned, hey, since the power outage, my clock's been two hours off, and I can't get the thing to work. I think it's broken and like not even five minutes later he had a new clock for me so just 
really appreciate, like you were saying, the support staff, and because it's not just what the teachers say or whatever, or what admins say, it really takes all of us to do what we do. So, thank you. That's it. <laughs> thank you. Oh, do you guys have any questions? Sorry. No, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, let's move into our consent agenda. Um, does everybody have an opportunity to look at the minutes from our last meeting? Any questions, anything that needs to be updated? Okay, and I don't know of any changes to this agenda. Yes, sir. There is one. Yes, sir, if I could. Uh, golf, G, sorry, G. G will strike for tonight. Okay. You probably have to remember when I get to G. Yes, sir. <laughs> or H. You might have to remember H. And I think I think when we were talking about our agenda earlier, um, retirements, resignations, and hiring were were good at this time. Yes, sir. None of those. Correct. So. Um, Ms. Dickerson, Kyla, if you would give us. I would defer to Barb. Or She's going to give you a okay, financial Barb, I'm, report. I'm, yep. I'll remember to say that because you, I was you gonna tell say, me that every time. I was going to say, she's, she's been rocking that world. Yeah, you have your financial report in your packets, and the most exciting thing about the financial report is there's absolutely nothing exciting about it. There's nothing I like better than everything just ticking along like it's supposed to. You, um, one thing I did want to bring to your attention is that you will see, if you compare this September report to the August report, you will see dramatic differences in the year-to-date totals. We talked about this a little bit last year that I wanted to, our fiscal year end is June 30th. Our teacher contracts and our parent payment schedules go through August 31st. So the July and August payrolls are actually the last payrolls of the prior fiscal year. So in June for the audit, we run accounting entries in order to put those into the proper fiscal year. And historically, we have waited until the next audit cycle to reverse those accrued amounts. Because salaries have increased so much and benefits have increased so much between year to year, we really don't have a true picture of what our monthly expenditures are as a year to date total when we don't take out last year's information. So we should spend on the salary line items 8% each month. So September's total for year to date is 8%. So you'll see that, so if you looked at last month, you would have seen that they were at 16%. We add another month and now you're back to 8%, that's why. We've reversed those accrued entries and now we're presenting a cash basis accounting um, presentation um, that is based on actuals for this fiscal year. So that's the biggest change that you'll see. You'll see down at the bottom, bottom that we um, our checking accounts are in balance. We have some benefit changes that occur in the month of September, and that always causes a little bit of a mismatch between what we pay our vendor and what is actually coming through the bank because of electronic payments. And so that will all clear up next month. So the little bit of outage that you see right there will be cleared up next month. So, but. I have no surprises for you at this time, which is the best report I can give you. Um, we are in the process right now of submitting um, tomorrow the September 30th snapshot in time is due to the state. Um, this is the first leg of the stool that identifies um, what will be 90% of our funding for the year. We have two trigger points in the fall. September 30th is that snapshot of who is teaching our children. So this is where we've talked about, you know, what is their education, how many years of experience do they have, where do they fall on the career ladder, because that's the amount of uh, funds that are generated from them. And then no, but that first Friday in November will be that third leg of the stool of how many students we are teaching on an average daily attendance basis. And so those two pieces represent 90% of the funding that we receive from the state. So that first piece is due tomorrow, and then the next piece will be due November 15th. So, and Melanie. Yeah. Um, 
Melanie, I think you had a question for me. I was just curious on the books of periodicals. And why that we only is, have budgeted the 50, 3200 Okay, and we talked about this a little bit in June uh, okay. when we when we did the audit. And we had it scheduled to purchase the new curriculum in June. And so we carried over a larger fund balance in July because I was able to get a $50,000 grant if I waited until July 1 to pay that bill. So it didn't seem like it made any sense to me to pay it on June 30th and lose $50,000. And so I waited until July to have that bill paid. So we received that $50,000 grant. So when we amend the budget, after we see what this first 90% funding mechanism does for us, we'll revise the budget and we'll clean that up at that point in time because our fund balance actually carried over larger than we anticipated because it was the amount of what we were going to spend on that Eureka math. Yeah. No, no, thank you for reminding me because it is a big red thing that jumps off the page and everybody is like, $170,000 over budget, what are you talking about? So, any other questions for me? No, thank you. You always cut me short. <laughs> I can speak for days, you know. getting and thankfully we finally got it done where it prints uh, the signatures on the check so all Mel has to do is just initial the bottom of the check to say oh yeah I reviewed that so she doesn't have to sign it, it looks yes like it and there's 85 checks in there I'll tell you there's a lot so it would have been a lot of stamping <laughs> we've had that we've had that with our payroll side and it just wasn't working in the in the budget side but now it is so and I guess I could just have to be the third step. Yeah, yeah. And, and I could tell you just a small little snippet. We we did have some problems with a, a check that was in, interestingly enough, it was signed by um, Melanie and um, and uh, uh, Riley, and it was sent to a company in Las Vegas. Well, somebody hijacked that check, wrote it with their name and an amount and came through and we caught it that it was um, fraud but it did get cashed in the bank so we were liable for that we've turned it into the fraud department but it did freeze our account so um, the, the school the budget side got frozen and so it's it's um, we're, we're navigating that we're navigating that and it's going to work out and it, it's just um, it just is, those things are very upsetting. I don't know if you've ever had that personally, but that's what's happened in our world for right now. So we're working on it. Okay. So. Any, any, we obviously have to approve and pay the bills. Was there any, anything new about the bills that we need to, need to know about? Okay. Having gotten to the end of our consent agenda, in order I will add. To, sorry, oh, that, I mean it's not really a question, but it's just an observation more than anything. Um, as I look over these expenses, um, quite a few things from the Lower Foundation, and it's pretty cool that we've been able to get quite a few of those they've grants. Been, to, they've been, they've yeah, been amazing. And, and I, the one, the other Lower Foundation grant that they received, and and maybe um, went to your or well actually it went to all our schools um, they got a grant to purchase uh, Spanish books but books written in Spanish for our kids so all three schools got 800 and some dollars from the Lore Foundation to do that purchasing so it's a great great thing and and, um, and um, Dolores at the middle school was already telling me that she's got kids that are checking out books and, and loving it so Pretty cool. Yeah. Thankfully, the Lore Foundation is with us. Fantastic. So, in order for us to move on to the next part of our agenda, I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the 
motion that we approve the consent agenda. I'll second that. Okay, motion to approve the consent agenda has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, <coughs> let us move on to our action items. You know, it seems like we talk about buses a lot, but yeah, this time we're talking buses. about actual, not a bus, but, but routes or bus different things. Yes, right. uh, hey, Mr. Chairman, it's an annual request just uh, that you, you sign off on uh, for uh, the year's worth of field trips, basically, for, for the district. There, it was so, yeah, you, we can look through that. Um, there wasn't just any change. I don't believe there's any additions yeah. as of from last year. Just the same as last year. Okay. What was the, um, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in this? Uh, it shows zero buses, but then it says Lumberg would drive the bus. Does that need to have a bus? They, so, they have a bus, yeah, they take a bus. Zero. Yeah. So, so it should say they need a bus. But it's not okay. it's not costing the school district because no. the bus driver is going to be, uh, and it is a an organization of the school. So, but I will tell you this, if Just you guys want to talk about it, that that van is getting used Let's by see. different organizations, and it's it's helping out a little bit, I think, with the bu the bus driver shortage. So they also did not go to this. Well, that's what I was like, maybe this is another one. Maybe it is, I don't know. Is there another FCA event outside the one they just did Sunday? I have no idea. <laughs> so, um, so the transportation stuff is submitted to Casey, so I don't know exactly what you're looking at, but um, I would say it's very similar um, to last year. And what we tell them, uh, our staff, is that if there's a possibility of going put it on the list, yeah. it's easier to take it off than it is to add it. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, high school bus transportation request in fiscal year 2025. I'll second. Okay. The motion has been made and seconded twice to approve this transportation request. request. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Just, Mr. Chair, if I could, please. Uh, the back door of the van is, is scheduled to be fixed in a couple of weeks. Okay. And it came in a lot less than we. Yeah. Those of, you, those of you that didn't know, our van was in a minor incident during our parade. And the back door <laughs> got hit. <laughs> So, so One of the many you, fun this things. This is why you make the cross country team run. Just <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, Mr. Dillon, we have some policies. Yes, sir. 1303 and 1313. Anything that you can tell us about those? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the first one, and it's kind of ironic, but it's the it's the policy that tells us the annual policies to approve. So it behooves us to approve this policy. So we can approve the other ones. So it's there. It's safe to actually yeah. require to have that in there. And I was floored when I went to look for it, and it wasn't there. And I went, well, good grief. So then the other one, the 1313, is just a conflicting. So if you guys are um, updating, then the update, most update, is going to be the one that we accept. So those are both pretty easy. But we do have to then get a schedule of how we're going to review those 1303 policies, because there's about 20 of them. But they do just need to be looked at each year. <laughs> yeah, but that's easy once this is approved to yeah. schedule those and look at yes. two or three of them every fourth week. Mm -hmm. Or do it faster so it's done. However, we can talk about that later. Um, did anybody have any questions or concerns, comments about those two policies? Do we need to try to adopt them again tonight, or is this yeah. this is going to be a first to second reading? We should. A, a this reading is going to be just an adoption. It's okay. just going to be the power move, I guess. Anybody, I mean, power move. Issues with that. Okay. I would move that we adopt policy 1303 and policy 1313 into our policy manuals. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, 
uh, motion to uh, adopt these two policies, 1303 and 1313, has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We're going to count it as everyone. I know you were late. Thank you, Okay. Uh, we have another policy, 1385. Mr. Dillon, you want to tell us about that? Yes, sir, please? Mr. Chairman, thank you. This is just some verbiage change in reference to uh, the superintendent serves as. We want to change that to the superintendent appoints the uh, Weezer School District's Title IX coordinator and the deputy coordinator who oversees the implementation of this policy. So having just create another a layer in case it comes to me that I don't have any already some self biases or biases built up but just just sit, sit in the stage so it's already a policy that we have yes, in, in yeah. place and we're just changing it's the a for a few verbal items any questions concerns that mr. Dillon thinks he doesn't have time Okay. I will get a motion on that particular policy. I move that we um, update policy 3085 as stated. I'll second. Okay. Motion to adopt 303085 as, as written for us has been made in, and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Awesome. Okay, it was you know, Kyla. Thank you. All right. Um, fiscal year twenty five Edgar Manual. Yes, sir. No, you know you don't I didn't I didn't print that. It's pretty big, but uh, it's it's the Education Department General Administration Administrative Regulations. It talks about procurement, talks about bookkeeping items, it talks about um, grants, monies, things of that nature. It's just an annual. It's an annual. Annual. Uh, uh, just like the. Uh, just like the other one, right? This college is annual. Approval. It's a. It's a federal requirement that we have this, and it's a requirement that we have to have it approved every year. We didn't make any changes to it, but it's um, to say that you understand that we have it and that it's approved for this year. And we should probably do it maybe in August in two years to come because we've already been going along and we've been using the Edgar Manual for what we. We do, but we kind of mirror it. Am I getting that right? For oh yes. So so where we well, I guess we're adopting it for fiscal year twenty five. But I was going to say where we do it annually. And yeah, you have to do it annually. That, that, but, I, that, but I mean, is it? So you're saying we should do it in August, so that at the beginning of the school yeah, year exactly. versus Ex exactly. It's a school a school year thing, yeah, exactly. not just a. Exactly. Okay. Just a follow up question. This is the exact same as it was written last year, so I don't have to read it verbatim this this year. Okay. Well, <laughs> you may want to though. Sir. You may want to. I started so to. Good. I was like, oh my gosh, this it's is a lot. Light reading. It's yes. Very light reading. Yes. 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 It's good. Writing it was even, it's only 46 even pages. more fun. Because <laughs> I will tell you, I was going to it. we came no. we came up kind of the uh, and people called us for our copies so that they could just. Take out the yeah. Weezer School District and put their school district. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why were you at the window? I know. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I wish I had went out there. <laughs> okay. It's it's good. It's good. And actually, it's it's it makes you think when you read it. You go, oh yeah, that that's not not allowable. And we need to do things, you know. Yeah. And when they do a federal audit, they come in and they look at your and don't make sure you're following. Oh, yes. Okay. We move that we approve the Edgar Manual for fiscal year 25. I'll second that. Okay. Motion is made and second to approve the Edgar Manual for FY25. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It was unanimous. Got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, what, another. Another approval needed in um, the gifted and talented program. This is new. As a three-year plan, this is a new plan for us. Um, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, if I could. Um, prior to COVID, we had a, a, a program, pretty good, a good program, and then COVID came and we kind of kind of went by the wayside, and other things uh, became more, more, more important. 
if you will, and now Angie's gone back and resubmitted it uh, to the state. It's a three-year three plan. Um, Go ahead, Ms. Angie. I was just saying, well, I will submit it after this evening once you have an opportunity to approve the plan. That's what I said. Uh, exactly. I was just, re just reiterating what you said. Um, yeah, so the template for the gifted and talented uh, planning has changed since COVID. So this is the new template, and a lot of the new plan is focused on, um, like all plans and all federal programs, doing some reflection on how things have been going, but a big shift to looking at curriculum and how we're uh, – looking to adopt or consider our students who might be gifted and talented when we're looking at curricular um, adoptions or just things that we're using as um, um, additional pieces of learning for our students, how we're making sure that we're engaging kids who need to be learning at higher levels. So this three-year plan is really focused on just rebuilding that foundation that we haven't uh, we haven't had a gifted and talented uh, district level committee. We did have a very active committee prior to COVID, so it'll be about reestablishing that committee. Um, a little bit of an update to our protocol, uh, just in that we're looking at students who are scoring high in the upper quartile, that they're you know in that 98th percentile um, as part of the academic or intellectual piece for kids who might be um, identified as gifted. Um, but the referral process is open to anybody to refer, so that's included in the plan, parents, community members, teachers, can refer their kids to be considered just like we do on the special education end of things we refer kids to an evaluation committee we look and determine whether or not evaluation makes sense right now um, if not we go back to the team and explain why not if it is then we move forward with getting consent and working through the evaluation process so it's a very basic plan in the new templates um, with the goal of just getting started again and getting back into the process of referring kids and um, evaluating, determining whether or not they're eligible for that service, and then moving forward with how do we align curriculum and, and activities to support those students. So it is very basic right now, um, but that's where you need to start, right? Basic foundation is pretty good. Any questions that you might have for me specifically about that plan? So on the page four, under the administration, uh, your name is listed. Does that mean you will be heading up this uh, so presently, the answer is yes. Okay. Um, however, <laughs> I think there might be some shared partnership with our academic achievement officer because the focus is turning to more curricular pieces. Um, that probably makes more sense with um, what Mrs. Clark is doing versus where I am in, in special education right now. Um, but that is, that'll be kind of a transition time and space for us this year. So we'll work collaboratively on that. Um, I'm still available to do the screenings and the evaluations. Being a building administrator is a very busy job. Um, so we'll we'll work together on, on doing that. Um, yeah, <laughs> at any building, it's not a busy job ever. So, yeah. Any other questions you might have for me? I thought you were gonna tell me I had a typo on page four. <laughs> 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 so this is just for three years, then in three years it comes back as yes. and yeah. so every three and years we're expected sure. to update our plan um, and submit a new three-year plan to the State Department. It can be updated more frequently than that, but that's kind of the maximum time frame that we should be going before okay. we update the plan. So if you see things over the course of one year, you can absolutely. go in and make changes. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. For your, thanks yeah. for your work in that. Appreciate it. I had some good help, so. Yeah, it looks like a good team that you've been here. Especially since it was over the summer, so lots of email communication was very nice. I would make a motion that we accept the gifted talented program three year plan as presented. I'll second. Okay. The motion has been made to accept the gifted talented program. It's been made and seconded. All those Aye. 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 Okay. All right, more more discussion about um, the emergency closure that we had. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, you know, any time that we alter our calendar or the hours that we submitted to the state at the beginning of the year, we have to get it approved. And I think you can do a C in there. Uh, we just uh, load, kind of loaded up for you uh, for the high school and the middle school, the hours that uh, <coughs> we left school. And you just need to sign, you have to approve it and then sign off on it so that we can see that. 
What does he sign it? I think it's down at the bottom. Just just the minutes. Beside mine? No, it's just the minutes. Just the minutes. I guess just the minutes. I'm not sure how to sign that. The typos are not looking at us. We can sign anything. Okay. <laughs> but you do have to motion. Yeah. Oh, I move that we approve the emergency closure on September 19th for the power outage. Did I say that right? Yes, yes that works. The motion has been made and seconded to approve the emergency uh, closure on the 19th. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. It was unanimous. Skip button G. <laughs> Go right to H. Go right to discussion. <laughs> Does anybody have any future items that you would like to have put on the agenda? Is it uh, legal for me to discuss a past item? No. Or we can put it on the discussion item. It was just my update from Region 8 meeting that I went to. Do you want any of that recap? That would be in communication. That would be great. Can I say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. Will, yeah, so let's get through Pause this agenda and then okay. we'll, in communication, we'll okay. talk about cool. that. I appreciate that. Um, and we do want to get to that. No, no future agenda items? Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's a future agenda item or not. A 90 day um, but I just fine. had some teachers suggest that? approach me about a change in the staff dress code policy concerns. That's that's a good future agenda item. Dress code policy. Yeah. For, for, for employee staff. Okay. staff. For staff. And can I make a request for a policy to look at a policy and I'm going to give you the policy number. Um, 5400 on leave of absence um, I have a suggestion for um, a change on that policy I mean we haven't I don't know that we've got this quite in there yet but um, I I would like to amend it before it even goes to you so there you go 5400 so leave of absence right okay. leaves of absence and it's a policy change that I We'll probably okay. on next board meeting. Any others that well, I know my wife's gonna want to talk about uh, possible conversation about curriculum items in the high school. I don't know if that's something that she we can put on the agenda item for next time or not, but I know she wants to talk about it just from a It does have to be on the agenda for community conversations as per our policy. We can have that there. What was it? Uh, curriculum. We can be more specific English curriculum. Would that be all curriculum? We can narrow it down to just specific. Yeah, we can narrow it down to just specific. really trying to do is make our next meeting longer. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I tried to make this one as long as possible. <laughs> so okay. Let's let's talk about uh, let's read the communication that Mr. Doolin has um, and then um, we will let uh, Miss Price just continue on speaking um, with with the meeting she went to and share why she went for it. We have a letter from the Weezer Education Foundation. Dear Board, the Weezer Education Foundation wishes to thank you for the recent memorial in memory of Carolyn Fisher. The funds donated will be used to assist the students in the Weezer School District. Thank you for your thoughtfulness, Cindy Campbell, Weezer Education Foundation Board member. And then, yes, last month I went to the Region 8 meeting. Um, it was it was good. We had um, three three people from the ISBA were there to present to us. Um, a couple of the things that they 
talked about are the early bird sessions at um, our convention are reimbursable. So we recommend going to those. Um, they were, and I had mentioned this to Kyla, they are looking for student entertainment groups. Um, I remember last year the Finland Jazz Band played for us, and so maybe we can get our amazing band to participate, I don't know. Um, and then the main conversation um, topic that they um, had with all of us was seeking common ground and um, in community having a shared vision. Um, they gave us all a copy of this book. I haven't read it yet, Mastering Community. Once I read it, I'll let you guys borrow it. <laughs> um, anyway, with Mastering Community, they, or Mastering, yeah, Mastering Community, but Seeking Common Ground, they talked about the importance of shared vision, being united in purpose, communication, respect, and commitment. Um, and then the last thing that they did is they gave us all a copy of the 2025 ISBA resolutions that have been drawn up by different um, school boards around the state and whether or not the <coughs> state ISBA board um, you know, likes them or supports not. Them. Supports them. <laughs> yeah, supports or not. And so as group, we were all in kind of small groups and they went around and kind of we were able to discuss which ones were important. So I don't know if any of you have gone over any of those or not, but I know at the ISBA meeting we will um, vote on that at the yeah. business meeting um, where we're at with those. So um, they are on the state, the website for you to look up. Otherwise, I do have copies of all of them. And uh, yeah, I think kind of our main thing. I, I appreciate that, and I think we have one more school board meeting before. No, we don't. That's right. Oh, we don't. That's right. Not. This That's is right. Yeah. This is our last one. I'm going to talk next about the. Yeah. So, so we have reservations. I, I think I forwarded reservations to all of you um, where we are staying, and I have Mr. Walker is not able to join us. I'm so sorry. But the the meeting, the <laughs> first <laughs> first general session starts at noon. And it, there is lunch that is served at that time. And so um, if you are planning on going, I, I would suggest going to all of it. I mean, those that have attended, you get a lot of things that, but if, if you get there right at noon, you will have to go right into that. So you might want to get a little earlier because you go to a registration desk and pick up your bag and they give you, they will give you a packet with all of the resolutions on it and a lot of information. And um, then we we can check into our hotel probably about three, which is about a block away. But I think we can park there at that hotel before we um, to go to the meeting. I don't think we need to pay for parking there. But if you do have any expenses like that, just keep track of just keep your receipt because the school district will pay for it. Um, and please call me if you have any questions. I've got a room for each of you. And then Mr. Doolin wanted to maybe get together for a Wednesday evening yes, dinner. And, and But I would suggest the scholarship auction is on Thursday evening. Is that right? Um, and the scholarship auction last year, Mel and I went. And that was really, really fun. It was kind of a fun thing. It was a I fun didn't buy thing. anything, but I made a donation at the end. Yeah. I got, I got a bid on everything around I know, <laughs> I know. And yeah, I did too. They have a silent auction, and then they have a live auctioneer kind of thing. How um, do we, um, if, if we want to contribute something to Oh, we've got that. that where have we got that going on? We're but like, a, a little, can I bring something? Would you like to? Because um, Michelle, Mr. Doolin, loves to make baskets. So I've given her a budget, and I had her put some Weezer things in there. But if you want to contribute into that I basket, you know, just that would be wonderful. We would love it. We want to be one my, of the large uh, items. <laughs> my daughter was the recipient of a scholarship for that, and it's very cool. That, I mean, it, yeah. it, it, it is. They really celebrate. And I'll tell you what, um, we are Region 8. It's kind of weird because you think of yourself as Region 3. but. We're Region 8, and it's been a dry spell for the Region 8 people. So if your granddaughter or your are one of your children, so it can go down to your grandkids, um, can apply for this scholarship. If you served on a school board, you they are able to um, uh, get, get money for a scholarship. And the 
money that's raised is through this auction that we have. So, and that's Thursday night. Gotcha. That's on Thursday night. The auction's kind of fun. It's it really is. It's kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and lastly, I unless we, I'm going to send out some emails about this so that you guys have all the information. Okay. So it'll be great. But I, I do need to make one small thing at the end here. Um, we had um, one of our long term, long, long, long um, employees uh, pass away and had a celebration of life for her the other day. And honestly, truthfully, I must be in, I must be living as a mushroom. I didn't even know about it. But Charlotte Harada served our school district for a lot of years and was just a wonderful person, um, just a wonderful community person, um, did so many great things and always had a smile and her sense of humor. I can, I, there are stories I can tell you all over about Charlotte and funny. But anyways, I just want us to note as a board to, to say that we lost a really good person for our, for our community. I, I, I just still feel really bad about it, but anyways, it's, um, I just wanted it noted. Thank you. She taught my dad how to do oriental cooking. She did? <laughs> well, she hired, I can remember, oh God, I can, I, I can tell you the story. I'm not going to, because they're all funny. She taught, but was he a good student? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, that, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So you'll email us. Uh, I'm gonna email everything. you all the stuff. I've got I've got the agenda and everything, and I can just attach that and give that to you as well. So okay. okay. Thank you. And if you want a carpool, <coughs> not, I mean Barb and I are driving down together, but you're welcome to come with us. Uh, we we'll, we can drive. So we are. If you don't want to take a car. We are um, on on Friday on yeah on Friday on the third day. There's a session for you guys, a general session because you guys get to vote. But then there's a clerk session on the other side. But but we'll be there. We'll be there. The middle school will be there. Like, oh, yeah, the middle school the, is going to yes, yeah, yeah, so middle the, school the, is going to have publications. a publication. There, they I I sent it out right away. And said, they're looking for people oh. to display and. Courtney Thompson said, I'm doing it. And I said, okay, uh, go for it. She so did. if you have ideas for them, because it, they're going to be in a confined space, and if she has the entire group, so she's trying to think of things for, you know, the kids to kind of do around and about. So um, if I you have she ideas. should have some yeah. cards that to yeah. pass out to these people and say, here. <laughs> Yeah. We're the Weezer School this District. Is this why. is why your kids should be going. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't you wish you lived here? Don't you, <laughs> don't you wish you lived here? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, there's only one more motion that needs to be made. Why are you confident? Because she was excited about it. Excited. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion. Okay, I'll second that. Motion to adjourn has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.